hello and welcome back to the Great East Attorney. Last time, uh, we got permission to actually, like, work on the case. And we heard a lot about what happened in previous stuff, so this is gonna be that big case that brings everything together. On the, like, the not penultimate, but the pre-penultimate, uh, trial. So I think they normally make, like, I think they've typically made, like, the, uh, fourth case out when they have five, like, a shorter one that acts as, like, a prelude. And I think they actually sort of, like, flipped it up. They introduced, like, the, um, the story of what's going on here earlier and let it just sort of settle in the background and then came back to this later. I'm just thinking about how they normally structure the stories of these. Not that I, like, have this deep memory, but may maybe it's something they just did early and I got in my mind that that's the typical. But, uh... It does seem to be a variation on the typical structures of the overall game story, at the very least. Okay, here we go again at the scene of the crime. Hey, buddy. Now to thrust these representation papers in Gregson's face and see what he makes of them. Hello again, Inspector. You have a minute, please. Oh, what is it now? Here you go home and get some rest. Here we are, Greg. See? Here are the representation papers. Your lady, sir. I don't believe it. How the devil did you get that stubborn little rock of ash to sign that? I salute you. That is good work, that is. I mean, even they want her to have representation, so it's not like this is a bad thing. <laughs> I can see you've been very busy here as well. How about some tea? Oh, it's a special blend designed to relieve fatigue. Oh, got this again. <laughs> Let's see now. <coughs> oh, I don't even know. I just don't even think of. <laughs> oh no, he said a bunch of stuff there. Uh, yeah, yes, I. Are they real tired at all? What is the riddle, your ladyship? Is this um? Uh, <laughs> I'm actually starting to wonder if he's just straight up lying about that. Would it be alright if we investigate the scene of the crime then? Here is your place. You know what happened. So, uh, through that door behind the counter. Got it. Yes, the storeroom. That's where I discovered Mr. Windebank. Angina. I wanna look out here first though. Right, well, I'll be getting back to business then. Will you be investigating the storeroom as well, Inspector? If I'm perfectly honest, we need to wrap this up before long. Can't afford to spend too much time on it. But there are so many articles together, it's uh, taking forever. Even the lads working around the clock. Even with the lads working around the clock. Which is a problem, because there's another case the yard needs to investigate urgently. That must be what Lord Strongheart meant by far more serious matters before. So what I'm saying is, don't get out of my feet, sunshine. Aww, um, I'm happy you recognize my land of the rising sun background by calling me sunshine. I don't think that was the idea, but it actually sort of feels both insulting and not. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm fairly sure this contraption was here yesterday as well. This is the thing I was curious about. Little box thing. Here we are, though I'm not confident I can get close to it again. Or get it closed again. Oh, yes, that's a folding stereoscope. Okay, it's not just like the box thing that they were talking about. <laughs> really? This is a stereoscope. Mr. Sholm showed us a picture yesterday that you were uh, supposed to be able to see in three dimensions, but unfortunately, this is on a TV, not a 3DS. But for that, uh, he used the great big contraption over there. Ah, well, that's for use in public houses and places like that. It contains a carousel with all sorts of pictures inside. But this little thing is a much simpler design for use at home. There are special shops selling prints you can use in them. I have a little collection myself. I wonder if I can make money out of these in Japan. It would be keeping my toilet sparkling clean anyway. Wait, what? What? <laughs> Wait, what? Uh... This officer's been uh, staring intently at the wall since we came in here. Shush, keep it down. Oh, uh, sorry. I think I was thinking, but okay. There's a major clear just yeah. Really? Then we must tell Gregsy at once. Ah, uh, but as soon as I report it, that'll be it. 
No, I'll be stuck here even longer. Stuck here? What do you mean? I haven't been I haven't been home in two days already. I need another constable to relieve me and take me over take over me ship. Ah, uh, they really have a tough time, the British police. That doesn't stop us investigating though, does it? No, I suppose not. Fairly sure it was the calendar he was peering at. Indeed. Okay, calendar. If you, if you want to take the input, switch with your bad, uh, like, wireless connection that no other system seems to have where I actually have to move the controller over my desk so there's a clear line of sight between the c console and the fucking controller. Oh my fucking goodness. Uh, ah, look here. Yeah, blood. And a bullet. Oh yes, a bullet hole. And I can see the bullet still lodged in the wall. Presumably, Mr. Windebank was practicing with his uh, revolver uh, in his spare time. And it was on the 16th, because he always uh, flips that. So we can establish a timeline based on the fact that uh, shit happened on the 16th. And I think today is... I, I think 16th was probably the day before? Or is it the day? Either way, it'll establish one day or the other, right? That'll help establish a timeline. Uh, well, Mr. Sholmes likes to practice uh, in his drawing room whenever he can. He's very patriotic like that. Drawing room? Wait, with a gun? Sorry? Wait, 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 wait. It's all there in the Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, you know. Isn't that right, Iris? Uh, did I write something like that? Uh, partly in jest, perhaps. I in jest? Well, he doesn't do it often. It is quite a dangerous pastime. He doesn't do it often. He shouldn't even do it once. Oh, forget that for now, Runo. Let's examine this bullet. Also, like, don't they rent that place? Like, they aren't owners, too. Because I remember them talking about a landlady when we were getting our place. Oh, what's that around the bullet hole? It is... Blood? Huh, a suspicious red stain on the calendar. Yeah, you know what would be really weird? If you shot it and there wasn't blood. Aha, uh -huh, well I may be able to help with that. What? There's nothing like a sight of blood to get the blood pumping, is there, Runo? I mean, in a sense, that's right, no matter the situation, right? Oh, I have a feeling I'm not as uh, bloody-minded as you, Iris. I'm afraid the sight of blood makes my blood run cold. Oh, there you have it, you see. When it comes to blood, we're all different types. Yes, what a scientific observation? So you need this. Oh no. What is that scary looking thing? Mm, Curly and I actually haven't come up with a name for it yet. But as soon as you see it in action, you'll understand what it does. Watch. No, don't point it at me. Ah. Oh. We probably should have taken some... The color of the blood stain has changed. Oh, please, Bobby, we have been paying attention so that we have that unofficial record. It's not like we're taking photos of this place. Actually, you think they... they You know, they probably did take photos of the place and would have the red. Uh, because they do have cameras, that's probably something they did early on in the investigation, so they've been doing it for a while. That means they probably did it a while earlier, yeah. There. Does it make sense now? Yes, I think I'm starting to understand. Good. It works on the principle that different people have different types of blood, you see. Yes. How wonderful. The chemical of fires combines with the blood and makes it change color. So you can identify whose blood it is that you're looking at. In a flash. Oh, what a fabulous invention, Iris. Isn't it? Isn't it? I bet Guinea would say, it's bleeding gray. So, whose blood are we looking at, then? Someone with green blood, obviously. Well, all the chemical does is turn blood the different colors, so... Just find someone whose blood turns the same color, and you'll know who's, who it belongs to in a flash. Yay. It's more like two flashes, really, isn't it? One flash or two, this could well turn out to be a very valuable clue. We'll see. I mean, obviously, yeah, obviously we're gonna make note of it if we can. If the opportunity comes up to test and prove something, then that'll be that. Let's keep testing and adding the results of any other blood analysis to the portfolio. Okay. As long as I have reagent left, sure. 
<laughs> You're so, le uh, so much less enthusiastic about it now. Three gold balls? That's right, that sign shows the shop is a pawn brokery. Three gold balls. I've never heard that before. Bit like your armband shows you're a defense lawyer. And what's the significance of three golden balls? Does that have some special meaning? <laughs> Why do I feel as though it's gonna be lewd? And Iris is gonna be the one to tell us. I expect Hurley would like to answer that question when he's back from the hospital. What? Okay, yeah, thank you for not being the one to explain to something. You mean you don't know? <laughs> you assume he knows. Oh, hello, Bobby. Trucks and Bobby also examine every article in the shop and every, uh, every ledger and book of accounts. Every article, but, but that's a ridiculous amount of work, surely. We've been hot at it ever since the shop was still out of crime scene in the early hours. We're well, zipping through it all, it all in the ships at least, but still. We'll be working through the night, that's for sure. And even then, we'll barely have scratched the surface. A crime in a pawnbroker's. Must be every policeman's worst nightmare. It's every copper's worst nightmare, you know? A crime in a pawnbroker's. I had a similar thought lately, if you'd, uh, if you could imagine that. That's the music box. Do you have them, uh, do you have them where you come from, Runo? Yes, but I've never seen one as large as this in Japan. Oh, well, this will be a treat then. Shall we have a listen? Wait, we already listened. I mean, it's nice. I like music boxes. I do. But we already listened. What do you think? Isn't it a pretty sound? It's a beautiful sound, yes. But it's a little hard to enjoy when all the policemen in the room are giving you fierce looks for playing the nice little music box during the investigation. Never mind that. If any of them say anything, I'll tell Gracie to have a word. Iris Wilson, superintendent of Scotland Yard. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, there's an article ledger here in Mr. Winnebank's notes and... Hmm? What's this? It looks as though someone's left a uh, little photographic print behind. Oh my goodness, it's the same fucking one. Oh, look on the back. There's some writing. Oh, he's there. Oh, show us, Susie. Show us. Uh, is this the same? No, this is different. Article deposited one gentleman's overcoat. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to establish that that pawnbroker, the other pawnbroker thing, is from here because it's the same, right? One pound pain, one pound redemption deadline. 15th of April, 10.30 p.m. A gentleman's overcoat pawned for a pound. Clearly is a very fine coat. I, in fact, I think. Yep, this must be the ticket for the overcoat that Guinea redeemed yesterday. And is still wearing. Which belonged to Mr. McGilden. Hmm. I've never expected that the redemption ticket to be handwritten on the back of a photograph, though. Seems Mr. Winnipeg just used whatever piece of paper he had happened to, he happened to have on hand. Yeah, that doesn't seem lazy. Why does he... Is there, like, a cat out there that needs to be taken care of? Uh, like, another cat that needs to be taken care of because someone died or got left or and they just left a cat behind? Well, this photograph of a cat. It looks very familiar, doesn't it? I'm sure I've seen this exact same picture somewhere else recently. Oh, uh, yes, you're right. Very recently. It's the same as the one Kenny gave us earlier. Of course. I was forgetting that she gave us that print. What are you waiting for then, Mr. Naruto? Get it out! All right, all right. Well, I'll let the cogs turn. Identical. Yes, they are exactly the same. <laughs> I've got it. These two photographs hide an amazing secret. A secret? What does she mean? <gasps> you must tell us, Iris, at once! <laughs> Do you really, really, really want to know? Yes, we need you to tell us all you know about this pair of photographs! Are they of his cat or are they some like generically mass produced uh, photograph that he just like. So, Iris, about these two photographic prints. The one we found here on Mr. Windermake's counter and the one Gina gave us before. What is this amazing secret that you mentioned is hidden between these two identical prints? 
Actually, that's not quite right. Sorry, I mean, this is like legitimately what you just said. If you look carefully, the two prints aren't the same. Not exactly. Oh, uh, okay. I will now need to look at them again. They're not. I wasn't looking that close. I was more thinking that the connection of them would prove that the other one was for an item in this shop, which means we could probably prove that it is... Actually, did the, the other side of it probably said window bank on it, didn't it? Uh, we probably already proved that. Never mind. Sorry. I'm taking too much time in, uh, in between recording episodes. I'm forgetting details. Okay. Uh, the difference being... The cat is sli looking slightly to the side. Yeah, the cat does n is not uh, facing the exact same direction. On uh, uh, I think so. It's very subtle, though. But what's the reason for those subtle differences between the two prints? Well, the fact that it's... Uh, I mean, they're just different photos, right? Which means it's not mass-produced, at the very least. Which means it probably is his own cat, right? Oh, well, it's because they're a set, you see. Oh, a 3D set? No, I don't. For, like, one of the 3D things. This pair of photographs... ...is meant to be used in a stereoscope. Everyone in London is raving about them at the moment. Ah, a stereoscope. Why do I feel as though I've just heard that word before recently? <laughs> it's in a couple of conversations. What Mr. Jump showed us yesterday. You see? There it is, just over there. Ah, uh, yes, of course. That magical machine that makes pictures look almost real enough to touch. Got it. <laughs> well, actually... It's quite possible to see the same depth in pictures even without one of those contraptions. What? Really? Is it the smaller one that we already talked about because we already had that conversation? You know how a pair of flat photographic prints can appear to have any depth in the first place? Uh, no, I have no idea. Oh, wonderful! Then I'll be able to tell you. She's over the moon, bless her. <laughs> Should we let her explain, though? We really need to carry on investigating the scene. I, for one, simply have to know. I mean, you're leaving pretty soon. I mean, imagine if you left without hearing this. And you just have this lingering in your mind. How does that work? Oh no, I won't be back for a long time. One sec, one sec. I need to, I'm gonna get water at least, because it feels- I almost felt like the game was selling me. Ah, oh, this is gonna take a little bit. Okay, water in tow. Let us ask how Darius got the prints work. I, I mean, I have a general idea. It's been a while since I thought about it. I, I have to- I probably have to look up details, because I probably don't remember whatever uh, stuff there is off the top of my head. Uh, have you ever considered, Reno? How our eyes see depth in the world around us? It would actually be really impressive if they took the gimmick of the 3DS and they made that like legitimately a sticking story point in the like criminal mystery of the final trial of the game. That that would be impressive. That would definitely be impressive. Like it's just like being able to do that, I guess. Uh, how are I see depth in the world around us? Yeah, by having two of them. Well, I just open them and it works. But the reason it works is because we have two eyes. Two eyes. Jogging. If you try closing just one eye at a time, I think you'll see straight away. What you see with your left eye. What you see with your right eye. Are ever so slightly different. You get a view with each eye. Uh, a different view with each eye. I'm guessing on the 3DS version that probably like legitimately turned off the 3D. To make sure that you only got one or the other. Yes, the position of objects seems to shift, uh, slightly. Exactly. And in your head, the brain uses that shift to, uh, estimate depth as it merges the two views into one. That's how we can sense depth in everything we see. Ah. My brain really is amazing, isn't it? it does so much without even telling me. Ah, I think I see. So the pair of photographs is a uh, it consists of a left eye view and a right eye view. Is that right? Oh, well done, Susie. Yeah, I pressed it too soon. So if you can persuade your brain to merge the two pictures together in your head, you'll be able to see the depth in the prints. Okay. Yes, Bruno, you're beginning to understand. I well, I think I'm already past the point of needing to understand, right? 
Uh, and a stereoscope function is to just is to act as your brain and allow you to do just that, or at the very least, present the images in a way that you can see them with your eyes in the right place in order to merge it. Uh, less of your brain. Yes, but as long as you have the two images, two eyes, and one brain, you can actually do it yourself without needing a stereoscope at all. Yeah, but that's easier said than done when your eyes are looking at the same thing in, like, the world. And then, like, in order to make that really properly work, you'd probably need to... You'd probably need to, like, actually, like, uh, overlap between them, which is, I think, the point of the scope, right? You can? Wait, really? Sure. Let's try it. Let's see if you can view the pair of prints without uh, the help of a stereoscope. Oh, yes. I'm dying to have a go. Zazan really loves this kind of thing. You need to be able to cross your eyes. That's the main thing. Can both of you do that? Oh, uh, okay. I can, I can get that. Because your crossed eyes are looking at very different directions. That probably also means... Oh, did they mention having to cross your eyes in the other one? For the other stereoscope? Oh, yeah. I think they did. Cross your eyes, it means your eyes are no longer focusing on the same focal point, which means you can put the pictures in different places. I get it. Okay. Oh, I... I don't know. Crossing my eyes gives me a freaking headache, I gotta be honest. <laughs> Cross my eyes. <laughs> I, I think I can. Watch me. Watch me and see if you can copy. Oh my goodness, if it does the thing I said before, where it just slowly has her cross her eyes. Oh my fucking goodness, it did it! Oh my fucking goodness, it did it! Why? Oh my fucking god. Oh my goodness, demon child. Demon child, make your eyes do this. Oh my goodness, is she gonna do it now? Are you ready, Mr. Naruto? No, I'm not. Oh my fucking god. It's so creepy to see! <laughs> oh my fucking goodness! <laughs> okay, I see why we need you to go to back- we need you to go back to Japan. I- okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I made that jump! That's fucking fantastic! There, how's that? Wonderful! Now it's your turn, Runo! The trick is to concentrate on looking at the bridge of your nose with both eyes at one time. I mean, I cross my eyes. I've done it so many times. It does give me a headache nowadays, though. That's probably just more recent eye strain. And that just gives it work, though. Ooh. Not exactly an easy task when two people are staring at you cross-eyed. I don't think they can stare at anyone cross-eyed. Alright, that's enough practice. Now let's try looking at the prints. Start by staring at one print and slowly crossing your eyes. Okay, this is like work on a... I mean, it's saying we don't need stereoscopic 3D, so this is actually work on my TV. Uh, you should see two overlapping image. Uh... Fucking goodness, I'm trying, but it's not working for me. <laughs> you try it now, Runa. I'm just gonna have to give it a try, I suppose. Did the print split into two images for you? Now the next step. Okay, I mean, I got the two images part, sorry. I was sort of assuming that the two that they were showing were the two versions of it. Uh, let's put the pair of prints side by side like this and try, try crossing your eyes again. Am I trying to make them overlap? Oh god, I got it for like a second there. Oh, but my fucking goodness, that's... I'm too far away from my TV, I like can't cross my eyes that much. It needs to be like a very slight cross or else they're way far apart. The prints slowly merge together. 
until... Uh, yeah, no. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that does not help my eye strain trying that. Ah. Oh, yes! Oh, my goodness. It's like she can lie, Max. Mr. Naruto, it works! It works! I can see you in the middle now! It looks so real! I can look at it all day! You're gonna break your fucking brain like that. Demon fucking, uh, Cesado. I wouldn't advise that. Your eyes might start to hurt. Your turn, Reno. Yeah, okay, I got it to work for longer there. I am getting better at it, but, ah. Pretend you're trying to look through, the, uh, looking, pretend you're looking through the two pictures and slowly cross your eyes. God, yeah, no, 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 yeah, I think I'm getting better at it. I'm fucking. The eye strain's actually not getting worse now, though. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm, like, actually working out my eyes. Keep adjusting the position of your eyes into two images that over uh, overlap exactly in the middle. Yep, no, I did it already. I'm not gonna... I'm, I'm not gonna settle on this for a while. There, you managed it. So now you know where how uh, stereoscopic images work. Well, I don't know who discovered it, but it really is quite extraordinary. Yeah, I don't know who either. It's also very much a gimmick. <laughs> Yeah, it's a very much a gimmick. It is much more. It was much more impressive in the 1800s. I'll say that. So, what do you think of these ser uh, stereoscopic prints, then, Runo? They're certainly amazing, but isn't it easy to get the knack of viewing? It, it isn't easy to get the knack of viewing them properly. No, some people find it easier than others. That's why contraptions like this exist for people who find it tricky. Oh, I, I recognize that. We saw one over there yesterday, didn't we? If I remember correctly, uh, you press this little knob here and, like, we already talked about this thing. And set the pair of photographs in this and back and... It's still amazing, even though I know roughly how it works now. Woo! Well, London seems to agree with you. Stereoscopes are very popular at the moment. You can find one of these floating contraptions in lots of households in the capital currently. But if these little machines are so affordable, surely there's no need to go around staring cross-eyed at pictures like you hate them. But it's much more satisfying to be able to see the effect with your own eyes. Well, I think so in any case. Stereoscopic pictures. Huh, I never even heard of them until yesterday. We certainly learned a lot about them, but I wonder if it's knowledge that I'll ever actually need. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay. That is a... That's a take a break from looking at things for like five minutes sort of moment there, I think. <laughs> Uh, that's just open the count there really is enormous, isn't it? it? Must be an awful lot of work to keep track of all these hundreds of items upon. So much to think about. Better sell it all and have a clear head if you ask me. But clearly, Mr. Windebank was very careful when it came to the articles in his care. Much more difficult back in our uh, analog days, for sure. Uh, I think that's everything in the front room. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else to check here. Not until we head back to the back. Let's see if we can find that little box. And the door. And this, uh, it's the storeroom, isn't it? That's what Kregsi said. Yeah. Yes, that's where we saw that dreadful scene last night. There's a little window in the door. Winnebank, face down on the floor, with Ina beside him. As the accused legal representative, you have the right to examine the scene, Mr. Narahodo. We must make a thorough investigation. Yes, of course. And we will. Behind that door, that's... That's the real scene of the crime. 
Don't worry. Are there any clues in there? I'll find them. Got it. Not gonna object. Is that just like a different location to move to? Yeah, okay. It, it is. Ooh, okay. I see an open chest. Which, uh, you know, I'm gonna guess I know what chest, what, uh, was in that chest, given the discussions of a chest with a thing in it, uh, before. Poor Iris. She's clamped up completely. Iris is bound to find this difficult. After all, Mr. Winnebank's life was taken in the very room only last night. There's also a lot of little boxes here. Oh, yeah, sorry, no, we're, we're still talking about how she's not hailing death now. <laughs> ah! Uh. Wait, Inspector! Oh, what is it now, sunshine? You you took one look at me and tried to run away! You're like a Scotland Yard Inspector would run away from some jumped-up little defense lawyer, do ya? I mean... How about, how about a girl about to cry? I just... Well, uh... <sighs> Wouldn't you prefer to say that you ran away from me than... I've never seen our ladyship looking like that before, that thing is. I didn't know uh, what to say to her. So you weren't trying to run away from me, you are trying to running away... You are trying to run away from a ten-year-old. I'm afraid this is all a little much for young Iris. Some gentle reassurance might go a long ways, perhaps, Inspector. Eh? Huh? Uh, reassurance about what? Uh, I, 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 um, <coughs> don't, um, don't trouble yourself unduly, your ladyship. I mean, at least you're not dead, are you? <laughs> I don't think that went very well. Why? <laughs> Look, I'm in the middle of an investigation here, Sunshine, and I told you not to get under my feet. And we have investigating to do ourselves. Yes. I'd like to hear most of what the socially in uh, inept inspector has to say. Oh, Hurley. And inquire into how Mr. Shom's operation is going. Do you really know that significantly more than us? Rexy, do you know anything about Hurley? Uh, is the operation finished? Is Hurley all right, is he? Ah, uh, well, uh, <laughs> well, the thing is, um... Don't miss your words, Inspector, please. You, you don't mean to say that, Mr. Sholmes is... Uh, no, 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 the operation's done and dusted. Are you sure? Are you lying about that? Oh, just that well. Oh, uh, with it! Oh, yes, Mom! They use something called a general anesthetic. It's the latest thing. It's the whole body insensitive. The whole body? Anesthesia? Anesthesia? Oh, God fucking damn it. He said it on his first try. Uh, but I can't fucking say it. Uh, anesthetized? <laughs> fucking hell. I'm not even going to bother. Is that even possible? Well, it means the operation can be completed while the patient is fast asleep. In the Empire of Japan, we can just manage to provide laughing gas for uh, tooth extraction. I do remember them calling it laughing gas when I was a kid. Now, uh, the trouble is, the latest thing isn't always the greatest thing, if you follow my meaning. They couldn't get the medication to work at first, so it took hours for him to nod off. Or so I hear. And now that the hour's finished, they, well, they can't get him to wake up, apparently. Uh, oh my... No one knows if the anesthetic still insists they're more, it's a bloke's just plain exhausted. But anyway, all they can do is stand back and watch until he comes around again. Hurley? Really? The moment you open the eyes, you're like, I swear I should get word to you. What a surprise. Even in matters of life and death, Mr. Shom still uh, has things, has to do things in his way. Okay. You'll let us know right away when he wakes up, just like you were going to let us know when the operation was done right away, right? Uh, so, Inspector, what do you make of the crime scene here? Ah, 
You got eyes, haven't you? Use them. This is what it looks like. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay. Iris, uh, could you lend me a hand? Uh, so, Craigsy, what do you make of the crime scene here? Oh, yes, your ladyship. Do allow me to humbly explain. Last night, at shortly after the hour of one o'clock in the morning, something yard was released in the scene. The one and only to, uh, the one and only to the store was found locked from the inside. So it was locked from the inside. The lock appears to be broken now, though. Is that the police officer's doing? Oh, quite right, ma'am, quite right. We took the liberty of smashing the door in. As humbly as possible. Oh, uh... As you can see, the victim was discovered. Gross state on the floor, and, uh... uh that's why he's... Uh, the next, uh, next to the uh, foreman which body, we discovered the vial got a child. Are you talking about Guinea? She's my friend, you know, Inspector. Is the strain. That happens, girl. Yeah. Let's go up on the floor, dead to the world. She's still alive, you know. I think it's just a phrase. Oh, yes, when I saw her, she appeared to be unconscious. Oh, no. When I saw her, she appeared to be unconscious. And I've read to say, she had the gun that was used in her hand. Oh. Presumably, it's the gun that's still down there on the floor now. In a pocket, we found the key to the door as well. What? The key to the storeroom? Huh. That all seems very, very much like someone set her up. But then we'd have to answer how uh, how the fuck did you uh, get out? Because it's not like she did. They, it's not like they went out, locked it somehow, then threw it back in through the little cubby hole. If, they, if it got into her pocket, maybe there's multiple keys. Uh, and you say the storeroom has been unlocked from the inside, Inspector? Correct. All of which leaves a lady's a trend. In something of a sticky situation, I'm afraid. Obviously, my personal opinion is that it's all some sort of a misunderstanding. Are you going to testify to that? Of course it is, Inspector. Of course it is. Yeah, are you going to testify to that? Ah, you rumba. Uh, I am curious if you even will ever, possibly, maybe. No? Okay. Okay, I was just thinking, yeah, this has blood on it. Uh, there's something rather troubling here. The red smear, you mean? Yeah, it looks like blood, doesn't it? I wonder if Zadisan had picked up on that. Well, in that case... Yes, we need Iris. We should show this to her before we forget. Oh, okay. Uh, we gotta go do that elsewhere then, I guess. Because apparently she doesn't get to be part of these examinations anymore. Yep, that looks like blood, so let's go do the blood thing. I would say it's from a gloved finger. Almost certainly a glove made of a leather. Oh, that's specific. Well, don't worry, Rune out. You can leave the rest to me. Boom. Rubble, 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 and purple. It's different blood. Look at that. Yes, that's a color we haven't seen before, isn't it? We simply must add it to the portfolio, uh, portfolio of blood samples. It could be an important clue. Got it. Although, it'd be nice to find out whose blood these different colors correspond to at some point. So it's just blood type, like O, A positive, stuff like shit like that, right? I assume that's basically what it uh, means, right? So what if two people share blood? Or do we not understand blood enough in order to, like, actually... Uh, do you know whose blood this is? No idea! How could I? We don't have a known sample of the same color. About that, it's impossible to know. Oh, how very vexing. I mean, I suspect we'll come across what it is when we, uh... I wonder. What? Well, it's true that the color doesn't help us. But what about considering how the mark came to be in there in the first place? The leather glove. You might have an idea about that. Might you, Bruno? Might I? I keep staring at me like that now. Let's try that again, shall we? Okay. Game's telling me I have to know. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't mean to. Damn it. I, didn't, I thought it would be the top option. 
Okay, I think I do. Yeah, so I think I have an idea whose blood this is. Not from the color return, but with a little deduction. That's right, I think it's clear. I risk you know as well. Okay. You first, Bruno, who do you think this uh, belongs to? Okay, people that I know that wear leather gloves. Ba -da -ba -ba, ba -da -ba -ba, ba -da -ba -ba. Um, this actually is a wider one of these two. I think these are the only... I'm going to guess this one because it's the more out there. Thrice fired Mason. You don't sound very sure of yourself. The way you trailed off there. Well, it was two months ago now in that case. And of course, I'd never met the victim. I'm struggling to remember his name. He was definitely thrice fired, though. The victim? Of the Omnibus case? Hmm. Yes, his name was indeed Mr. Thrice-Fired Mason. That would mean that his bloodstain... ...was left on the ticket two months ago. Yes, quite possibly. Also, with that in mind, I'm now remembering that Gina... ...she doesn't wear gloves? Because I remember that, uh, they saw... Oh, McGill did wear gloves, didn't he? Yeah, McGill did wear gloves. Thrice-Fired Mason might might have. Uh, McGilded didn't die or have a reason to be bloody, so yeah, Thrice Fired makes the most sense. Among the options that we have available, at least, right? Yes, I think it was. You uh, brought this ticket here to Windabanks yesterday. And yeah, I, I, I forgot if I actually finished the thought, but yeah, Gina didn't wear gloves because I remember them making a particular detail that it was blood-covered hands and it wasn't gloved, right? And that was like a distinction that we made in that previous case. Uh, I'm just guessing the blood stain was already on it at the time. Smear blood from the time that Mr. Mason was killed two months ago. Something else is coming back to me now. Mr. McGilded was also wearing leather gloves that night. Yeah, he might be a better option. Oh, you know what? Now I ask you, what's your heart so would it rush to help a fella bleed from his stomach? You know, actually, he, he now that I think about it, the fact that he stabbed him would make him a better candidate. I was just thinking like, oh no, he didn't have that. Or maybe he had, oh, I don't fucking remember. Uh, how about fella bleeding from his stomach? I was about to start worrying about my gloves now, wasn't I? Reach out to give the man a hand. Okay, uh, you know, but it's not on the thumb. Actually, it isn't on the thumb very explicitly if I, from that. Certainly does look like a leather glove thumbprint, this mark. But we know that Mr. McGill had no injuries at the time, anywhere on his body. From which we can conclude that any blood on the glove belonged to the victim, Mr. Mason. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, that makes more sense, too. <laughs> Mr. Narhona, you sound just like Mr. Sholmes. Okay, no, no, I didn't jump that far, too. Good job, Rianosuke, you completely outwitted me there. Mine's the quirky slip-ups, I hope. <laughs> yes, I think you're right, Runo. Very well, let's make a note of this. Okay. We know what the purple man... We know what the purple man's identity is. That is a joke that is extremely unrelevant, to, like, irrelevant to this, I will note. <laughs> uh Okay, let's start on the blood. Uh, please mark the position of the body with a chalk line. Let's stay on that blood trail for a bit. Poor Mr. Windebank, he was a nice old man. Well, he did he definitely seem nice. Threatening to shoot himself a lot, but you know. Well, he's not just once, do the on. Most likely, the villain died instantly. He wouldn't have had to think. must be his blood, then. Oh. I don't like to ask such a, at a wretched time, Iris, but I wonder if perhaps... Don't worry, Susie. I'm ready for action. And the goggles will hide my tears. Oh my goodness, three different blood colors. Okay. 
So now we know the color of the chemical. Uh, the chemical turns when it reacts with Mr. Windebank's blood. Hmm, and this doesn't match our analysis of the blood stain we found in the main shop. No, but let's add the simple uh, sample to the others we've already collected anyways. The blood sample portfolio has been updated in the court record. Okay. That is good to know. Iris? Don't worry, I'm alright. Okay, so we need to get Sholmes. Uh, and we need to get, um... Uh, Guinness too at some point, right? Just so we can start, uh, lining up blood with potential, uh, people involved. Because Sholmes got shot. I don't know if they mentioned if the bullet was still in his body. But he did need surgery. Of some sort. Uh, but we must find the true culprit. Yes, absolutely. Uh, gun time. This, this is a revolver, a real one. And quite, quite possibly the murder weapon. He used to take Mr. Windebank's life. What's the matter, Susie? You and Runa look like you're about to faint. Well, it's just that I've rarely seen a gun in the flesh. And I've had issues with guns in the past. But anyway, we saw Mr. Windebank with us yesterday, didn't we? We can confirm that it is the same one. Oh, look at how relevant the suicide joke has become. Oh, happy day, happy day. Yay. That must be the same gun. And last night, when I looked through the spy hole in the door to the storeroom here. Right, yeah, she definitely doesn't wear gloves, got it. Uh, the same gun I saw in Gina's hand. Mr. Winnebank told us that he only ever had a single bullet loaded in the revolver, didn't he? Yeah, that's an important point. Well, it's empty now. The one and only bullet he had in his gun had been fired. So we can be fairly certain that only a single shot was fired from his revolver. We know it was fired at the very least. Okay, the chest is the other thing that seems very... Out of all the articles in the storeroom, this is the only thing that shows any signs of being ransacked. Ah! What is it, Iris? That's... That's the box file that my manuscript was being kept in. Oh! Iris's unpublished story, The Hound of the Baskervilles. Surely that's not what all this... Could it? Huh... Man, it feels like this is going to go really in-depth on, like, multiple stories between the Gilded and, uh, this murder and whatever the fuck happened with that. I don't know, I have know anything about the Hound of the Baskervilles outside of... I think it involves hounds, maybe? Ah. Uh. It was there! Iris' story was there! Wait, what? Really? It was? Well, that's good news, isn't it, Iris? Um, yes. I mean, of course I believe Hurley when he said they deposited here, but still. It's a relief to actually see it. Really? Because that's not a very well-hidden frown. Really? Okay. Maybe someone read it. Maybe they weren't actually trying to, like, steal it. They were just trying to get the information out of it. Hmm. And we did talk about it in public, so who knows what, uh, what might have been heard about. They also might have just opened it looking for stuff, because it's a chest that was probably fairly well secured, right? Look at all these articles that have been deposited. The room is stuffed full of them. I can't believe how many there are. A bicycle, a gramophone, a musical instrument, even some enormous paintings. Look! Pieces of different people's lives, quietly gathering dust in here together. Also gonna note, he doesn't take names, so... No way to get him back, until, unless, like, someone is willing to redeem those tickets. Something very peaceful about the atmosphere in here. Or at least there would be, if not for the chalk outline on the floor, and the policemen shoveling around. Not much I can do about that, sunshine. Yeah. I 
don't doubt you on that front. 